Welcome to the Coulter Homes Inside Florida Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring all the lifestyle aspects on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. This week's show is presented by PGA Village Verano, the award-winning new gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida, with a 27-court pickleball center and clubhouse and home of the World Pickleball Open. And now, here's your host, veteran sportscaster and pickleball enthusiast, Carl Foster. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster. Welcome to Inside Florida Pickleball, our premier edition here on Fox Sports Florida. Coming out of several months of the pandemic, it's our pickleball post-pandemic show. A lot of exciting things happening in the pickleball world to come. With the events being rescheduled, we're going to have mentally tough tips with Lee Rosenthal. We've got strategic and competition tips, great interviews with industry leaders about the sport of pickleball, the fastest growing sport in America, and also bred right here in Delray Beach, the national champions, mother-daughter team, Lee and Anna Lee Waters. Inside Florida Pickleball with our post-pandemic show here and with us uh, the pleasure, Delray Beach's own national champions, a mother-daughter combination. If you're in the pickleball world, you've probably heard of them, maybe seen them at tournaments and so forth. But Lee Waters and her daughter, Anna Lee Waters, joining us here. And just great to see you. Uh, I'm sure you're happy to be out of the house. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, actually, this is the first time we've really been out of the house and here back on our home courts in Delray. So it is nice to kind of feel a little bit of normalcy again. Also, you have tennis backgrounds, which we've talked to a lot of the players that do have tennis backgrounds. Are you still playing active tennis or are you just pickleballers? I still play tennis, but she she's done <laughs> for now. But um, I think that it helps helps with both, like pickleball helps with tennis and tennis helps with pickleball. And when did you guys get together and actually start playing the first pickleball match? How, how long has it been and how did that happen? Well, we started playing pickleball um, about two and a half years ago. My dad, Neil, uh, who lives in Pennsylvania, he taught us to play. Uh, but the first time that we actually teamed up was only about a year ago. And we kind of teamed up last minute, just thought we'd have a good time. And we ended up coming in second in the pro division. And we thought, well, hey, this, this worked out pretty well. Let's give this a go. And a year later, we won nationals. and. Now we're partners forever, or as long as she'll have me. <laughs> well, that's well, that's it. Now, how is it playing with your mother? I know how probably from the father side and the mother side playing with your with your child is great, but as a young and upcoming pickleball tennis player, and your mom, obviously always telling you what to do growing up and listening to her, how is it on the pickleball court? When who makes the decisions? Well, I don't think we've ever had an argument on the pickleball court. I feel like when we're on the pickleball court, court we're partners. But we have like kind of like a mother-daughter intuition where we know where the other one's going to be on the court. And I feel like we just help each other like mentally and physically on the court. Now, when you look at it, we look at the Bryan brothers, we look at families and so forth. Obviously, you're with each other all the time. So maybe mentally you're together, spiritually even know each other's movements, you know, more so than just your average double part. Because you've played doubles with other people. And I don't know if you play doubles with other people also. But uh, what's the big difference in, in, in your doubles partners and getting that chemistry on the court? I think we kind of call it our it factor. Um, you know, we never feel nervous with each other. If we miss a shot, we know that the other person is going to be supportive and not give us the eye roll or, you know, get mad at, get mad at us, which is huge in pickleball. To, to not have that pressure from your partner, it really, I think, gives us that step up. And like you said, um, we do kind of know who's going to hit what shot, when, where, how, and that helps you prepare for the shot that's going to come back at you. So we're always like kind of that split second ahead, I feel like. When you get into the, the bigger tournaments and uh, the, the, the nerves start playing a factor when you start elevating yourself and you get into these national championships and so forth, what are you thinking about then and is, do you have any pre-meetings, are you getting mentally tough, are you, getting, are you, are you, are you talking about things? before the match? I'm always nervous before I play, but once I get on the court, I'm fine. But it was different in nationals. Like, when I woke up that morning, she was like, Annalie, get ready. We're going out to practice, you know. We're, you know, we got to win this, you know, all this. And she had never done that really before, and that was, like, the first time that she was really, like, intense in the morning. And it didn't make me, like, more nervous. It just kind of made me, like, okay, I got to win this for not just me, but now I have to, like, win it for her, too. How, how did you feel that day? So it sounds like you had a little... 
anxiousness. I just, we had played great all week, um, so the days were staggered, so we had to wait to play the finals till the end of the week, and so that morning when we woke up, I just looked over at her and I was like, we are winning. And I just knew we had a great opportunity, and I just wanted her to be focused, because she was 12 at the yeah. time and you know 12 year olds aren't always focused when they wake up first thing in the morning so I just wanted her to be focused right away and heck she played so great and we came away the champions. Uh, what's the future in store I mean what are you looking at your own future obviously you have a different future than you have but as far as you know schooling and playing other sports and so forth but pickleball seems to have taken over your lifestyle a little bit. I mean, definitely traveling around the country and playing pickleball professionally. Like, I was traveling around and she was playing professional at first and I was just doing amateur. But when you get to professional, it's just like, it's so much fun to like, especially to travel with her and like around the country to be places that I've never been before. I mean, I just think if the sport keeps growing, I just want to keep doing this for like as long as I can. Because there's 80 year olds who are still playing pickleball, so I mean. I'll play you until the, yeah, I've got a long, long pickleball Super road ahead. senior pro. <laughs> and that's what we talked about because pickleball is adaptable. We see grandmas playing with their grandkids and we see all different age levels playing. And when you're playing in the tournaments, uh, do you play singles at all? Do you enjoy singles or strictly doubles players? I don't play singles. Anna Lee is very good at singles. Um, I, I just feel like I'm too old. <laughs> no, I save my body for, for the women's because that's what's most important to me. And singles is very grueling. But I usually play singles if it's at the end. I don't yeah, really play right. when it's at the beginning of the tournament. Yeah, but um, but she loves the singles and she's an energizer bunny, so she can do it. <laughs> now, when you look at uh, obviously, there's a lot of endorsements. Pickleball is just it's like a wild west. It's growing. We're learning all the manufacturers involved and the pros are starting a pro circuit and a pro tour. You guys have any aspirations in playing on this pro tour and? Is there enough money in pickleball? I mean, this is not your only job. I understand you're an attorney, so your day job, uh, you still work for a living besides just playing full time. And uh, maybe some people are doing it right now, but they have to either teach, clinics, play. There's maybe not enough prize money yet at, for the professionals to just do that 100%. Right, so the, um, the top couple pros from the men and the women, there's enough money coming this year that these same people are winning the tournaments. They can do very well. Um, but right now, the bulk of the money, like you say, is in teaching, uh, clinics, uh, pickleball vacations, um, and, and that's really where the money is, and that's why it's important to continue to grow the sport with the big sponsorships, the big name sponsors, to, to, to help infuse the sport with some money. Because right now, it, it's always kind of mainly been the paddle companies that have really supported the sport, and they can't do that forever. Um, but we are definitely thankful for our battle tech. Um, but, but for sure, I mean, we're seeing the largest uh, purses this coming year in these new tours that you're talking about that we've ever seen in the game. That's pretty exciting. Still to come on the Coulter Homes Inside Florida Pickleball Show. Insights from industry leaders. Go again until you strike just right. Until the ball sings, until the other guy blinks, until the court's clear and the sun sets, until you see it in your sleep and wake up swinging, go again, till you can't miss, until you can't lose, go again and again. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at pgavillagevarano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at pgavillageverano.com. Inside Florida Pickleball, and we are Zooming in our premier edition of Inside Florida Pickleball with this uh, pandemic in the last couple months where the uh, the world has changed, the world of pickleball has changed, and most of the sports world has been pretty quiet. So we're starting to get back to some new normal. And joining me uh, right now is Melissa McCurley, who I had a chance to talk to at the World Pickleball Open when pickleball was going crazy and the world was like uh, you know, competing like no other. <laughs> We had a great tournament there, and uh, then everything shut down right after February. So 
Uh, Melissa, who heads up pickleballtournaments.com, has been doing pickleball tournaments for many years. She's a Navy veteran and a software specialist. And first of all, thank you for your service, Melissa. It was Memorial Day weekend and uh, it was a, a weird strange event celebrating in a different way. But uh, just talk about how did you go from the corporate world, well, first the veteran corporate world, and finding pickleball uh, some six years plus ago that's uh, taken over your life? Yeah, well, I'll try to make that a short story, Carl. But, uh, <laughs> I had uh, joined the military out of high school. The thought was I wanted to be a, a nurse or a doctor, and it was a good way for me to get some uh, real world experience and pick up some money for college. And during that process, um, I stumbled across, uh, uh, upon corporate America. And I ended up going from a hospital type um, and nursing type field to, so instead of taking care of people, I moved into computers and started taking care of people who use computers um, and found myself going to work for Ross Perot's company, EDS, in uh, the Washington DC area. I went on to help build the largest infrastructure uh, in an intranet for the Navy and Marine Corps uh, before being promoted to a global role as a service delivery executive uh, onto the American Express account, which then moved me to uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and Phoenix uh, is where pickleballtournaments.com found me, and life has never been the same. You do a thousand tournaments in a year, but it seems like it's it was going at a great pace before this pandemic sort of shut the wheels down, but how fast do you see this thing ramping back up? Oh yeah, I, I as fast as uh, things will allow it to ramp back up for everybody to still be safe. So uh, every third week of each month, we do an assessment to see what's happening with tournaments coming back. So for June, we've already confirmed 10 tournaments coming back, um, two large ones in the state of Utah. And so anywhere from the state of Washington, Idaho, uh, Utah, Tennessee, are all places that will be running tournaments in June. Uh, we have another 12 that uh, have not yet confirmed and a couple undecided uh, and some that have had to cancel. Uh, are you going to face the issue with fans and competitors or how's that going to work? Do you have any new guidelines for these tournaments? Yeah, well the USAPA has put out some uh, guidelines for uh, recreational play and th some of those are now being used for tournament play. So uh, in reaching out and talking to some of the folks in Utah who are the larger tournaments to get ready to come back, they're having to just practice um, protocols that they've not had to in the past. So taking temperatures of players, uh, only players being on the premise when they're scheduled to play, wearing masks when you're not on the court. Um, and then just practicing good, you know, hand sanitation. Uh, and also um, there's things where they're having to play with their own ball or the same team has to play with their own ball. So uh, just some protocols that we've not seen before and certainly limiting the number of people that can be on site. They are allowing doubles play, uh, so that's good. Uh, but in cases they're not allowing a referee to also be on the court. That would put five people on a court in doubles play. So uh, each state will be different, Carl, uh, as this starts to ramp back up. But I can tell you, pickleball competitors are eager uh, to get back out there competing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of funny videos and different things of how people have been keeping active in their apartments or the backyards or the garages or finding a way to, to practice pickleball and do something to keep their sanity. Uh, until they get back out on the pickleball courts. And I know in South Florida, Delray Beach, and a few facilities down here have opened up now and they're, they are starting to play uh, doubles and single pickleball. So they're starting to get back to some new more normalcy uh, and from that aspect. But uh, as running a tournament now, uh, how's that going to change? Are you going to be social distancing police also? Are you going to, when you run these tournaments, you have to sort of uh, keep the mask on and, you know, like I said, how are you going to control the fans and the competitors? Can they bring their families, you know, to these events? Because pickleball is such a cultural lifestyle of a happening, and that's how why it's picked up so, so much popularity. It's sort of diminishing some of that uh, that socialness. Yeah, and and I think that's just the time that we're in. And you're right, pickleball is such a social game. That's one of the biggest draws around it. Uh, besides that of being, you know, a reasonably easy game to pick up and play, it can be a lifetime uh, sport. So. Social distancing will be a part of it. As far as enforcement and that goes, um, we're, we've not seen what's going to be required of that, how people are you know, taking hold of and embracing the policies, doing their part. I mean, everybody has different views uh, on this pandemic, and it's very real for a lot of people. 
where I'm at up here in Destin, we've played nonstop. So we haven't necessarily had to stop, but we've taken certain precautions in doing so. We stuck with our core group of players that have always played. We've put information out there. You know, if you don't feel good, if you just, you know, you feel like, you know, you're run down or whatever, then you know you don't come out there. We've set up stations out there that have sanitizing stations for your hands or the ball. You'll see people playing with gloves. We be a uh, social distance, so we're not necessarily sitting right next to each other. And everybody's pretty much been very good about that. And we're starting to see that at different places all over the country, um, everywhere from Arizona to Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Mississippi, Tennessee. So little by little, we're starting to see these um, areas and venues open. Um, I believe there's some tournaments that are getting ready to take place in June in Utah. So they're doing their due diligence and setting their stations up according to local and state guidelines to make sure that they're following those guidelines, but staying safe as well. Uh, what about fans coming back to watch at these major events? You see the, the big events, like we talked about the U.S. Open, you got the national championships at Indian Wells coming up. Uh, any of the big events still on schedule, or most of them still on schedule right now uh, to get back to some normalcy sometime over, you know, in the fall? Yes. You know, I was really sad to see that, you know, the U.S. Open had to uh, cancel till next year because it's, it is one of my favorite tournaments. And Chris and Terry do such a great job there uh, with the fans that come in and the players that come in, just like uh, the Desert Champions, uh, Desert Champion Club does at Indian Wells Tennis Garden. So if you, when you go to a tournament, the majority of your fans are your players, right? So you'll see that a lot of the players, once they get done playing, they'll stay and watch. Um, we are still pushing forward. We're preparing and planning right now for our nationals in Indian Wells Tennis Garden. Uh, we're very excited about that. We have a lot of great things planned for that. Um, we'll just have, we'll have to wait and see. We have to follow the local and state guidelines uh, first and foremost to ensure that they're going to let us back out on the court especially with the COVID now where, I mean, Carl, we can't do face to face. Uh, our next one won't be until June. If then, uh, we might have to push that back. So uh, we hope to have the online certification ready to roll first week of June. Um, and it's something that we're, we're really excited. Another thing that we think will help help grow the sport of pickleball. Well, where do you see the future for, for your own certification program and the future of pickleball coming out of this pandemic and how long is it going to take to get back up to speed you think well i mean we've already seen it here in hilton and i know granted south carolina is one of the states that's it's fairly open we've got a governor that's you know that that is you know we're in phase one and we're probably going to be in phase two here pretty soon but uh i mean it's just taken off here and you know you can see other places like you know naples and 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 and, and in the south it's it's taken off but we see it eventually crawling up north and, and um, you know, especially I was telling you about those portable courts, the people that have platform courts up north, they can play platform tennis in the winter and then in the summer they can they can lay it down and, and, and play pickleball and add another amenity to the club. I mean, look at with this COVID-19, you're seeing, you know, cornhole on ESPN. I mean, come on. I mean, pickleball is much more exciting to watch than cornhole, so. Ladies and gentlemen, pickleball has been canceled. Up next, the mental side of pickleball on Coulter Holmes' Inside Florida Pickleball Show. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at pgavillagevarano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at pgavillageverano.com.
slightly favored in the back end. And I coordinate. Here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center, we offer tennis and pickleball. The problem is that a lot of us don't understand the movements. And what I mean by that, Carl, could you come out and help me, please? Can I put you back? So if I was standing here and Carl was playing back and I'm right before the kitchen and Carl was stretched wide for a ball, Carl, could you move wide for a ball? The problem in the most of the times what happens is me being his partner becomes a spectator. I turn and I watch, I'm looking at Carl and then Carl hits the ball down the line, and before I even turn around, the ball has gone down the middle of the court, or it's hit me right in the forehead. So what can I do to play a better defensive game when playing pickleball? Go wide for a ball, Carl. My job is not to move parallel with Carl and stay right here. My job would be to assume more of a, uh, a, more of a defensive approach and move on the same angle as Carl. So now when Carl hits that ball down the line, I'm looking at that player. If he hits a cross court, I'm ready for that next ball defensively. It's time for the mental side of pickleball with gold medal pickleball winner, Lee Rosenthal. Brought to you by OneSoulPickleball.com. Conscious pickleball apparel, mind, body, and spirit. We have our mental, we have our emotional, we have our physical, and we need to take care of and serve all three. I, I would find my calm, I would find my focus, I'd really keep in perspective where I was and what I was doing and that it is a pickleball match, it's a pickleball game and it's you know not something outside crazy, it's, it's pickleball. One of the things I remember each day in life, which is tremendous, it's really appreciation. It's, it's gratitude and appreciation for, again, the we're coming back out here to pickleball again and I look outside and here we are, we get to see the, uh, the beautiful trees and the fresh air and friends again and this nice breeze and the sun shining. It's such a gift that we're, we're in this place to be able to enjoy and share. I know when I was a kid, my mom can watch me on the tennis court and see me out there and go, okay, Lee's, Lee's not doing so well because my shoulders are slouched and I'm looking down and things like that, where it's the body language. Yet, you know, you, the, 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 you can see how Rafa moves around the tennis court or any of these uh, great pickleball players are moving. So look at somebody's physiology. Look at kind of how they're, how they're holding their head. Look at their breathing, is it full? So absolutely, but these are also the things when we're conscious of them, we can adjust them. And I can go, wait a second, I'm doing this. Just by changing how I'm standing and how I'm breathing can then change how I'm feeling on the inside as well. We all need that mental side, that mental toughness right now and the mental therapy that's going on around the world. So we appreciate that aspect of sports and pickleball and bringing you a mental side of pickleball here on Inside Florida Pickleball. Go again, until you strike just right, until the ball sings, until the other guy blinks, until the court's clear, and the sun sets, until you see it in your sleep, and wake up swinging, go again, till you can't miss, until you can't lose, go again, and again. Shopping for a new home in Port St. Lucie? Start your search at PGAVillageVerano.com. Discover a resort-style community by Coulter Homes, featuring social and fitness clubhouses, award-winning homes and villas, championship golf next door, a 55-plus neighborhood, and South Florida's largest private pickleball center. See virtual tours and build your dream home online with interactive floor plans at PGAVillageVerano.com. Hello everybody, I'm Carl Foster, host of the new Coulter Homes Inside Florida Pickleball Show. The first weekly program dedicated to the fastest growing sport in America, Pickleball. Airing on Fox Sports Florida each Saturday morning at 9 a.m. We'll showcase the fun, amateur and pro competitions, equipment and fashion insights, health and instructional tips, pickleball lifestyles, trips and charity events. Coulter Homes Inside Florida Pickleball, Saturdays, 9 a.m. on Fox Sports Florida. It's Pickleball on Purpose. And that's this week's edition, our premier edition, our launch on Fox Sports Florida of Inside Florida Pickleball. We hope you enjoyed this show. Next week, we'll have more on the fastest growing sport in America, Pickleball, with tips, entertainment, health and lifestyle, wellness tips, everything to do with the Pickleball lifestyle. 
Until then, enjoy your pickleball, get back on the courts, and think on. Thanks for watching this week's Coulter Homes Inside Florida Pickleball Show, a weekly program featuring all the lifestyle aspects on and off the court of the fastest growing sport in America, pickleball. This week's show was presented by PGA Village Verano, the award-winning new gated community in Port St. Lucie, Florida, with a 27-court pickleball center and clubhouse and home of the World Pickleball Open. Join us again next week here on Fox Sports Florida and see you on the pickleball courts.